Hello, my name is Ant, and there are a lot of videos on my channel about different YOLOs. YOLO v5, YOLO v6, YOLO v7, YOLO v8, yay, let's get on a hype train and do a gonzo trip on a YOLO v10 anniversary. So in this video you will know, do I need to use it? Is it better than previous YOLOs? When I should use it in my project? Okay. Let's do a brief introduction about YOLO V10. So, what is YOLO V10? YOLO V10 is a bastard son of YOLO V8 and RT Data. It's another version of YOLO, so basically. Uh, I think that guys from Ultralytics need to sit in the cockpit of Hype Train and rename the YOLO V8 and YOLO V11, or otherwise, how it will work. So, in my opinion, YOLO V10 is a little bit interesting YOLO. So let's become like smart guys uh, like this ones and look a bit at the article. So basically the only one super important thing that guys did, it's dual label assignment. They just train with uh, two branches in the head. In one of them they train one to many detector when they don't penalty on incorrect classes or incorrect like prediction and the other is classic branch and where they just train one to one and because of this they have super sharp uh, predictions here and they just don't use non-maximum suppression. And because they don't use non-maximum suppression, of course, it became much faster than previous yields. It depends, of course, on how you can make your non-maximum suppression. But anyway, it's a similar approach that you may already see with some Hungarian loss training, like Detter or different approaches. So but it's quite interesting also guys said that there are a lot of efficiency design like lightweight classification heads special channel uh, decoupled down sampling run guided block design and etc 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 but the trick is that there is no ablation study about all these points the only ablation study here is about this dual head assignment and dual head assignment is working there is no information about any other stuff so let's go next and when we go in next i want to put a few important things that are super important for any yola detector and so on accuracy does this YOLA more accurate than previously? Yes, on COCA dataset. Why it's important? Because no one knows how good this YOLA on any other datasets. Even with previous few YOLAs, like YOLA v9, YOLA v8, there was no big difference for 99% of tasks. The main difference was about like super small objects, super big objects and stuff like this. For most of the objects, for most of data set, accuracy was around the same. Accuracy is almost the same like the speed. And when we look at this graph, the main important thing is that all these YOLA, they are benchmarked on NVIDIA T4 GPU. It's super old GPU. It's not up to date GPU. And no one knows how they will work on some modern GPU or on some modern Jetson or on some modern NPU. This graph can be completely different and definitely it will be and we will speak about this a bit later. The next important value about each one of the YOLA is support. How good is code quality? how big is community around this, 
how many different export scripts are here. So let's look. And it's super small repo. It doesn't have a big community around. It's not like big commercial project. And there is no expert in a lot of different frameworks, just TensorRT. And maybe it will not work in different frameworks because for YOLA v10, for example, there are pretty strange convolutions. It's like seven to seven convolutions and it doesn't work for some NPU accelerators, for example. So we don't know about support of this YOLA and usually it's terrible. Like, believe my experience, the best support is for YOLA v5 and YOLA v8 and all other YOLA, you need to go through a lot of problem when you need to export something. Next thing, license. When you look at all YOLA family, a lot of YOLAs has GPL3 or AGPL3 licenses. And it's pretty bad for your project because you need to publish all your source codes. No one wants to publish all the source codes. And because of this, everyone takes who like make real good commercial development they use like Dama Yola and Yola X and a few different Yolas that are not in like main branches like Yola V4 sometimes even Yola V3 and in this Yola it's also AGPL3 license so you can't just easily take it for, for your project. And there is a big problem with this AGPL3 license because when you take YOLO V8, you can just pay some money to Ultralytics and they will give you free license of this YOLO. But for YOLO V10, there is no such possibilities. I can just pay my money. So anyway, if I use YOLO V10, I need to publish all my source codes. I don't think that it's a good idea. Okay, how easy to use this? I think it's pretty easy, but um, it's easy if you run this on NVIDIA GPU. And if you run this on NVIDIA GPU, it's not a lot of real task, but to run this on some rock chip, to run this on some uh, more complicated NPU units, it will be pretty complicated. So, Let's summarize this video. When you need to use YOLO V10, you don't afraid of the license. It's probably research or some um, project that you will not publish or you li live in country when there is no license issues. So second, your company is glad to spent few hundred of hours on testing new version of YOLA and understand some problematics of like detection task and they are ready to pay you just to rewrite all this stuff in your own detection model. Good idea. Then you should use YOLA V10. Or, for example, when you really struggle about accuracy in your production and you really need this half additional percent of accuracy for the same speed. So, in my opinion, it's the only case when you really need YOLA V10. If you don't have these troubles, then just look on YOLA V8 or Dama YOLA or on RT Detter and probably you will be happy. So, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you to understand if you need YOLO V10. And yay, anniversary!